So sim swapping is a common topic on this channel and if you don't know what it is, it's a type of identity theft used by scammers on the internet to bypass two-step verification on many different services such as emails, bank accounts, an employee panel, or a cryptocurrency wallet. Now, sim swapping has been on the rise for several years now, and in 2021 alone, the FBI received over 1,600 different sim swapping complaints, with losses totaling around $68 million. Some examples of crimes committed using this method of social engineering include this case about Robert Barr, who at the age of 18, stole just under half a million pounds from a Boston cryptocurrency broker with his associate. This other case about 10 guys who were all connected, who stole a total of $100 million together apparently. Now, cryptocurrency wallets are the biggest targets for their inability to reverse or stop any transaction, some of your cryptocurrency gets stolen from your trading account or wallet. It's like, what are you going to do? It's like, you'll never see that money again and you'll have no idea who could have done it. Now, if you're worried someone wants to do this to you, the only way you can really protect yourself is by either using a two-step verification app that doesn't use your phone number, think something like Google or Microsoft Authenticator, or straight up change your personal information. Having multiple phone numbers can also help. However, this is probably something that you don't have to worry about unless you happen to hold a lot of Bitcoin in a not-so-secure wallet, or if you have a username that's really rare. Now, the fact is the culprits in these kinds of crimes are pretty young, to be honest, usually aging between 14 to 20 years old old, but how are these teenagers stealing this insane amount of money? The answer is hijacking phone numbers, aka swapping numbers off SIM cards. To do this, criminals use unregistered SIM cards or blanks from the provider they wish to use to try to gain access to said provider's panel. Using this panel, they can register a new SIM card for your number, for example, and gain access to all of your Bitcoins. It's really that simple. Now, let's get into how the hack works. We'll start with blank SIM cards. Now, using these in a burner phone, a simmer will transfer the stolen number onto one of these and now they're in full control of the victim's identity. The next thing they need is tools. Now, tools are the back end to the network provider, but how these kids get access to these isn't as straightforward, so I can't really tell you much, but the most common theme in court cases I've read, the tools are almost always gained by tricking or bribing the employees into giving access to them. Now, that leaves us with just databases. Now, this is the final and the most critical tools for simmers, and you can look at a database sort of like a big target list for them. These hold all the information required to track your location down, use your personal identity, and even log into some of your less secure accounts. Hackers will use these to do background research on potential victims in order to narrow it down to a few more high-reward looking targets. Now that you understand what the hacker needs, let's set up a real-life situation between him and his victim, and it all starts with the blanks. The simmer will Will purchase these legitimately or not and most likely send them off to a holder. The holder is sort of like the straw man in the group and he has the easiest job. All he has to do is put the sim card in once the number has been transferred and read the codes out to the rest of the group while they take over the victim's accounts. The reason it's the easiest but most dangerous job is because as soon as you turn the phone on it'll connect to the nearest cell tower and send a log to the network provider that probably has all of this information included in it. Another job that simmers need done for them is the task of looking for targets by searching through databases. This could also be the holder's job if he's more involved, it's basically just looking at all the targets on the list and searching for traces of money on their emails and socials. These people want to be 100% certain there's money on the victim's accounts before they strike. Once the group has gathered all these things, all they have to do is log into the tools, move the target's phone number to the blank SIM card, and that's it. Now the simmer will have full access to the victim's accounts and the money's theirs. They'll then transfer the money out of the victim's account into their own, usually using a burner wallet and then a service like a chip mixer. A chip mixer is a big pool of cryptocurrency, think like millions of dollars. Now obviously every single Bitcoin stolen can be tracked, so to clean the money up, the simmers will withdraw the money in there from one wallet and split the money up and withdraw it to multiple different wallets. They'll also update the victim's account information and disconnect any two-step verification processes in order to make recovery much harder for the real owner. With this, the simmer will have successfully completed his target and be on their way to the next one. Now most of the time the simmer will get away with the money without being caught, but more and more victims are getting wise to the scam and reporting it to the authorities. The FBI is now cracking down on these crimes and is actively pursuing sim swappers. The way they do this is they will trace the money back to the Bitcoin wallets used to transfer the funds and catch the hackers that way. 
Basically, if this happens to you, it's best to report the crime immediately to the police, as the longer you wait, the more likely it is you'll never recover the funds. So if the authorities can't find any links to these guys, they've basically committed a perfect heist. From there, you know, depending on how much money these guys get, whether if it's in the thousands or millions, they'll spit it up and basically ball accordingly. I mean, these guys will spend money on anything. Luxury apartments, watches, cars, five-star hotels and restaurants, even private jet flights, and of course, OG names. Now, Simswappers are the biggest buyers of rare OG names by far, and it's actually gone to the point that the FBI will even use purchases of these accounts to track down cyber criminals as well. Some simmers will even simswap owners of rare usernames in order to steal them for themselves or sell them off. They also do this because victims will likely not make a police report because an email or a Twitter account got stolen, at least compared to the victims who lost their crypto wallets with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, it's important to note that law enforcement is getting much better at catching these guys guys, and the FCC recently proposed new rules to require users to read out a code to employees before any changes are made to the account, which could stop some attacks, but certainly not all. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to me, and leave a like if you enjoyed. That's it. Peace.